Hey everybody, the fields are starting to dry out just a little bit so I can get out there with the gator. So I need to make sure that we have corn and soybeans emerging from the ground everywhere before I unhook the planter. Because if there's any spots that we need to replant really quick, I don't want to have to hook the planter back up and it'll be too late to do that after we've done our side dressing. So let's take the gator, get out in the fields and make sure we have crops everywhere. And while we're there, why don't we take the iPad with us and see if we can see some of these patterns in the corn plants that we were seeing on the iPad when we were planting. Let's go. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. So as you can see, I'm driving right down a tile line right now. It's dry where I'm driving, but on either side of me, the moisture has not been wicked out yet. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of hitting the spots that we generally have trouble getting the crop out of the ground. Here in this uh, bean field right here, this is an area that got a lot of traffic with the grain cart in the fall. This was a spot I was worried about. I've found a few beans that are having a little trouble getting up, but overall things are pretty good. It's definitely not to the point where we would be considering spending money to replant. So here's one of the new waterways that we made this year. And as you can see, there's been water running down it from this big rainstorm that we had the last uh, day or two. And I'm standing right next to one of these felt strips that we plowed into the ground going across the waterway. And you can really see how it helped here because there was a little dirt coming down. You can see right there, there's some sandy dirt that was making its way down the waterway and it got stopped right here by this felt strip and that slows the water down. In fact, it's still slowing it down right now as it rolls over that felt strip so it's not running as fast when it heads the rest of the way down the waterway. And you can see it did not even take the grass out in the middle. So it really did a good job. This is the worst spot in the whole waterway right here. It did a really good job there's a felt strip right there. There's a felt strip right here. There's another one right about there. And that really did a good job slowing the water down when it ran down this new waterway. So I'm here in this field that we no-tilled the corn into the bean stubble. Uh, we had planted some rye in here in the fall after we cut the beans. We just went right into the rye with the row cleaners on the planter and planted the corn. It actually came up really good. But one thing that's not so good is back here behind me. There's probably only an acre at most that's underwater right now. It really looks a lot worse than it actually is. You know, one thing I can't get over is the sky is just unbelievably beautiful today. Look at this, look at this view. I am the luckiest man on earth. Look at this. If this doesn't make you wanna wake up in the morning, I don't know what would. This is awesome. So here's an example of a spot where the iPad really saved us some money. On this row we were having a problem and as you can see I've got corn plants piled on top of each other. What turned out was happening was the seed door was actually coming open on the side of the meter and so the singulator wasn't touching the disc and it was letting a whole bunch of multiples pass on their way past the singulator. So that showed up as a bunch of blue streaks on the iPad, made it really easy to see there was a problem on that row went back and checked it out and figured out the door was coming open and got that problem fixed right away. If you hop over to this next row, you'll see this is what it should look like. Perfectly uniform spaced plants, one seed dropped every time. Good job, iPad. So here's an issue I'm really interested in figuring out now that we can see the corn growing. Take a look at this on the iPad. So every once in a while, the monitor would make a beeping sound 
and then it would show a gap in the planting map on the iPad. This would be, the planter's 40 feet wide, so this would probably be about 10 or 15 feet long. It would be a noticeable gap. You would definitely be able to see it in the field for sure if this was really happening. And I was never able to figure out if it was actually stopping planting and then starting again, or if it was just something malfunctioning with the software and messing up the map. So as you can see, if I hit the arrow button, this is where we are right now. So I should be able to drive right up to that spot over here and figure out if that was really happening or not. So let's go check it out. We're in the right track now. So this tells me we're right on the spot right now. I can see it now. If you're looking along here, and then there's no corn right through here, the width of the planter. You can see the gap. So there was something happening that was actually causing the planter to stop planting for just a split second. On the map, it looks like it should be a 10 foot long section with no corn in it. In reality, it's almost two feet, not quite two feet. At least it's not a big gaping hole in the field, but it is something I'm gonna need to get figured out because it wasn't just a monitoring issue, it was a, it was a control issue, so. I'll be looking at a few more of these spots. There were a few times that this happened in some other fields, so I'll drive around and try to find those and see if any of them are really big spots. But that'll be an issue to try to get worked out with precision planting. Okay, here's another problem that was periodically showing up on the iPad map, and I put problem in quotes because I don't know if the problem was real or not, or if it was just a sensor that was lying. You might remember in one of the planting videos, it kept saying that row 12 was occasionally not planting, and it would show up as a bunch of skips in a row and then just some holes in the coverage. And so I moved the seed tube from row 12 to row 13, and the problem went away. And so we surmised that maybe it was just a faulty connection. So I gotta drive out here and check. Uh, like I mentioned when we were planting, it has arrows in the middle of each planter pass showing what direction you are traveling. That way you're able to determine which row you're looking at if you can find the center of the pass. And the easiest way to do that is you can find the tractor tracks, uh, which rows had tractor wheels in them, and you know you're right in the center of the pass and then count rows from there. So let's go out there and figure out if we can find any of this or if this was just an issue where it was lying to us because of a bad connection. standing in between doesn't have any wheel tracks in it and then here's the tracks from the tractor and the center tires of the planter so that means that since the planter was headed this way this is going to be row 9 10 11 12 so if we examine that row this is row 12 and the monitor claimed that it was skipping a lot and not just skipping but completely failing to plant in certain areas and if we walk along here and look we don't see any evidence of that at all in fact it looks like it was doing an absolutely perfect job there is one skip right there but definitely nothing like I was seeing on the iPad at all so very happy to know that that was not happening in reality what it was showing on the monitor so that means that it was just a bad electrical connection and we fixed it when we switched the sensors. So that's good to know. Well, that's gonna have to be all for tonight because I gotta get home for supper if I wanna have a chance of having any. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. I did make it home for supper the other night just in case you were wondering. It wasn't all gone when I got home. Okay, I got the tape measure with me this morning. We're going to check a few more things. I want to check population, and that's what the tape measure is for. I want to check and make sure that the row shutoffs were working at the right spot, entering and exiting waterways, 
And then I want to look and see if I find any uh, spacing issues that didn't show up on the monitor or uh, singulation issues that didn't show up on the monitor. And I also want to see if we've got any plants that are lagging behind. Okay, so I didn't realize how much wind noise I was actually getting until I sat down to start editing this. So I'm just going to voice over this whole thing. Right here, I'm checking to see how the planter was doing at shutting off as it was entering and exiting this waterway. I was checking a couple or three different rows and they were all shutting off right where I wanted them to, right as they got into the grass on the edge of the waterway. Much better than last year. Um, really glad we took the time to drive the gator around early this spring and remap the borders of these waterways. All right, what I'm doing here is checking the population. I was trying to plant 34,000 plants per acre here, so what I'm doing is measuring off 17 feet 5 inches of one row, and with 30 inch row spacings, that is the equivalent of one thousandth of an acre. So if I'm shooting for 34,000 plants per acre, I should find 34 plants in this stretch of 17 feet 5 inches in one row. So I'm getting the tape measure laid out, and then I'm going to go down and count the plants see what I come up with. Then when you look across the field this way, it's easier to see the errors that show up. In fact, you see right there, there's a skip. And right there is a spacing issue. But overall, it looks pretty good. It can be tough in a corn on corn situation to achieve a nice stand like this uh, due to trying to get the residue taken care of. If you get a seedling that tries to start right up against a piece of corn stalk, it's hard to get a good start, but this looks really good. I'm very, very satisfied here. In fact, here's an example right here of a plant that got off to a late start. It's at least a couple of days behind its neighbors. It's probably never gonna catch up to the point where it's going to really produce a good ear. It's just gonna be stealing water and nutrients and sunlight from the neighboring plants. Not really sure what happened. It could have been an issue where the row unit bounced up out of the ground momentarily, running over a rock or something, and um, getting into that shallow dirt without any moisture set this plant back, and it had to wait for the next rain to get started. Not really sure, but we want to try to minimize this as much as possible. Now I'm just taking a quick look at how the planter did at shutting off when it came into and out of the end rows. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of overplant right here, and then as we continue to walk forward, it missed just a little bit. Uh, it shut off just a little too soon or started just a little bit too late, depending on what direction I was going. I don't have the iPad with me right now, so I can't tell. I'm not actually gonna get too worried about this, and I'll tell you why when we get back to the truck and get out of the wind. Some people would get all wound up about that end row issue. I'm not gonna change anything at all. I could fix the time delay just a little bit on the planter and make it perfect, and, but here's why I'm not going to do that. In the fall, when we start combining, we always want to try to find the edge of the planter pass to start there with the corn head. We have an 8-row corn head combining a 16-row planter pass, so that works out perfectly. But if we start into the wrong rows, we'll end up with two rows left on one end of the field and six rows left on the other end of the field, and it takes extra time. It also makes a mess for mapping yield because if we have a hybrid change or something different that we did with the planter in the middle of the field and we want to compare the difference, you'll have one pass across the field with the combine that has both hybrids in it. So we want to make sure we get started on the edge of the planter pass with the corn head in the fall. So the best way to do that is to have a minor imperfection like that to give you a visual to know where to pull in. We can see every 16 rows there's this much of a gap uh, coming into the end rows. That's just fine. I'm happy about that. In years past, we've had a devil of a time trying to get figured out where to start. Sometimes I'll actually turn the steering wheel just a little bit at the end of the planter pass to make one wide row and one narrow row so that you can see where the planter was. The GPS actually does too good of a job of driving it so it makes it hard to find. Anyway, that's kind of the extent of the style of crop scouting that I'm gonna be doing at this point in the season. We're getting really busy. We're getting ready to start side dressing. Uh, started spraying yesterday, so lots of things going on. Everything looks fine. This is the point at which I just wanna make sure there wasn't any serious issues with the planter that need to be addressed before I get it washed and put away. Um, and I'm really happy with the way it performed this spring. 
So later on in the season, we'll go out and dig up some plants and evaluate the roots as the root system starts to develop a little bit more. But I hope you've enjoyed this minor tutorial into early season crop scouting. If you like to watch equipment, be sure to tune in next time as we get hooked onto the side dress applicator and begin putting some nitrogen fertilizer down in between the corn rows. As always, thanks for riding along and we'll see you next time.